The Atlantic is finally waking up with an area to watch in the Central Atlantic, and right after Hurricane Eric became the earliest fifth named storm on record in the Eastern Pacific and the earliest major hurricane to hit Mexico, we're watching another storm that could approach the southwestern coast of Mexico again, bringing additional impacts. In this video, I'm going to show you what's going on with these storm systems, but first, if you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more weather updates. So here's a look at the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic put together, and this is the area we're watching over here in the Eastern Pacific that could bring the next storm system to Southern Mexico, potentially, but also just bringing a ton of rain across Central America, already happening right now. And then there's actually an area to watch in the Central Atlantic. Looking at the NHC, right now the NHC actually, whoa, Actually, well, they had it at a 20% chance. Now they've upped this to a 40% chance of tropical cyclone formation. And actually, from what I was looking at, this this actually does have a chance at at becoming a tropical or subtropical cyclone in the Central Atlantic. But it won't impact any land areas, even if it does turn into something. And here's a, here's a a look at the current satellite imagery of this disturbance. Uh, there is convection actually getting close to the center, so it is it is trying to get organized, even though it's a very small system. But also, in the Eastern Pacific, we're watching a disturbance with a 10% chance of forming over the next 48 hours, but a 70% chance over the next seven days, but it's gonna kind of parallel the coast of Central America and, and Southwestern Mexico over the next few days, potentially over the next week, and it's gonna bring at least very heavy rain if not potentially strong winds if it's able to organize into a significant tropical system. But our Central Atlantic tropical disturbance, the it actually, the forecast model, they don't really have a lot of information on it. it. It could become a tropical storm within the next 48 hours supposedly, but this is probably not gonna be a tropical system at that point. This has a small window to strengthen into a storm, so that this intensity guidance is not what we're really looking at right now. Here's a look at the GFS model, and they do show, notice this very small area, small but organized area of low pressure over the Central Atlantic, really a low in between two highs. And it does tonight, and going into Monday, it does have an opportunity to intensify, and the, the GFS is pointing out the small storm system. So as we're looking at no tropical activity in the Atlantic, really for a while, now we do have the potential for Tropical Depression 1, maybe even if it's able to strengthen into a, a very short-lived tropical storm, we might get our first named storm of the season, Tropical Storm or Subtropical Storm Andrea with this, if it's able to do anything. But it does have a small window of opportunity to strengthen before going into Monday night and Tuesday, it goes into more of an unfavorable environment. But here's. Here's a sounding over the area where this storm is forming, and we do have some shear, some moderate shear could be a problem for this, and the moisture is not so great. But the global models aren't really great at, at pointing out these small, quickly developing storm systems, and it is over some water temperatures close enough to 80 degrees, like in the upper 70s to low 80s right here, that are marginally favorable for, for development. This is the Euro model, so the GFS is showing it. The Euro model is also showing showing the potential that this this tries to do something. You know, going into tonight, into into tomorrow. So it looks like tomorrow could have an opportunity to actually do something. And you could see this is a closed, low pressure area. It looks like it's separated from fronts enough that it's going to be more tropical or potentially subtropical, but tropical enough to potentially become a named storm if it reaches tropical storm intensity, but at least depression strength. But then going into Monday night, going into Tuesday, we still have that low pressure center, but then after that, it, it starts to lose that organization and kind of just gets gets pulled further north into more unfavorable conditions and it, and it just weakens down. But we could get, we could get a, a system out of this, but it's not gonna impact any land areas, so that's, nothing to worry about, just something interesting to look at. But what is going to be impactful is what's going on in the Eastern Pacific. So we had Eric, that was a very powerful hurricane. Now we're looking at another disturbance in the Eastern Pacific. 
and the GFS model is not strengthening it for a while. They're really, really slow to strengthen this, so we have to wait till Friday night, June 27th, to even see a, a organized low pressure system, and it's very close to the coast of Central America on the GFS. Now, some of the other models are a bit different on this. This actually just kind of goes along the coast of Central America before it's able to really strengthen going into going into Sunday night so of next week. So this is in the next week that this is developing. So the GFS is not developing this very quickly at all. But it kind of goes along the coast of Mexico, basically in the same place that Eric hit. So it's going to be bringing in more wind, potentially, because this is a, a potentially a, a decent tropical storm or a low-end hurricane at this point, but a very compact system along the coast. And so this brings in more impacts, as you notice all that heavy rain just continuing across southern Mexico and Central America. And then after that, things actually apparently quiet down across the Eastern Pacific and not really anything in the Western part of the Atlantic either on the GFS model going all the way into July 8th. The Euro model is a little bit different with this. It actually keeps a, a weak tropical storm or tropical depression offshore the coast of Mexico by a, a, a decent distance, but it does, the, the outer bands do actually hit the coast of Mexico, but but other than that, it's just a, a rain event. It does actually stay offshore quite a bit. And then the GEFS ensembles actually give a, a better idea of what could happen with, with this since the forecast models don't really seem to have a, a, a great idea of what's gonna happen. There's still uncertainty because this isn't even an invest yet, but it's an area to watch. The GEFS is showing, showing it actually spreads out fairly quickly so after the next four days, some of the ensemble members don't really do anything with this. They just kind of start fading it out. But then as we go to June 28th, then finally it, it starts to kick off just south of the coast of Mexico at this point before it, it really just goes along the coast and then out into the, into the Eastern Pacific, out into cooler waters where it kind of fades away. But along the coast of Mexico is where this could actually intensify if it's if it stays offshore. And then here's a look at the Euro Ensemble, and there's they have a better idea of what's going to happen with it, but it's still spread out. So you have some taking it very close to the coast, and then others further out. So we'll have to see what happens because this isn't this isn't even an invest yet. It's pretty disorganized, so they don't really have a, a super great idea on on even how this is going to form. But it is something definitely something to watch because. It's bringing rain to Central America right now, and over, that's going to continue over the next several days, you know, bringing the risk for flooding. And especially if it actually hits the coast of Mexico, then there's going to be more impacts in the same place that just got impacted very significantly by Eric. But this next storm, which if, if it does get a name, it's going to be flossy. It looks like if it develops sooner, then it's going to go through around within the next five days. So it looks like the, the models actually are painting uh, two different possibilities with this. Either it forms earlier, kind of goes through around June 26th to June 27th, but then it's possible this holds off until June 30th. But then the Euro ensembles are still showing potential in the Eastern Pacific around July, July 5th to July 7th, but nothing in the Atlantic actually. Here's the GFS for the Atlantic. You can see they're actually pointing out this area in the central Atlantic has potential to, to form. So this could actually do something. That, go, that goes away and then, then we have not really anything in the Atlantic all the way till July 8th. So they're not showing any tropical activity in the rest of the Atlantic until July 8th. But we could have these smaller storm systems, not from the, the main development region or the Caribbean or anything like that, but you know, maybe off the east coast of the U.S. or something like that, kind of separating from a frontal system that could actually turn into some some short-lived tropical systems in the in the Atlantic. Any, any tropical storm potential is going to be from that, pretty much. Even the Euro Ensemble is showing the same thing with the Central Atlantic. But other than that, no no activity at all all the way into July 7th. And here's a look at the MJO. It's pretty much unfavorable right now. And then it does get favorable slightly over the over the Eastern Pacific and the Western Atlantic. 
in the next few days around June 27th and still a little bit favorable all the way into July 2nd before things go back to neutral or slightly unfavorable across across parts of the Atlantic and maybe even the Eastern Pacific all the way until August 1st. Now, this is going to change, especially as we go further out. This part of the, the forecast, really anything past this point, is definitely going to change a lot more significantly, but just not really looking like a bunch of activity happening after the next couple of weeks in terms of the Atlantic. We could get a, a couple of storm systems like what we're seeing right now. That's definitely possible, but other than that, not any big like main development region type of hurricane activity happening in the Atlantic. The Eastern Pacific though is still pretty active and we'll see how long that lasts. There's some other big things happening. We have some well below average temperatures across the Western US right now and a big heat wave building in the Eastern part of the US and especially the East Coast is gonna see some very warm temperatures over the next few days going all the way into the, the middle of, of this week, all the way into the later part of this week, still above average temperatures across a lot of the US, average slightly above average across most of the US going into the end of this week. And in terms of temperatures, we could actually see uh, temperatures in the triple digits going into, going into tomorrow across the East Coast. And the heat index is gonna be even hotter than this, but uh, temperatures in the hundreds across across the East Coast, all the way from, from Florida, all the way up to even, even New Jersey and New York City, uh, Boston. But cooler temperatures out in the Western US with 60s and 70s in some places even. But then those hot temperatures continue along the East Coast and everything, but also then heat starts building in the central part of the US towards the end of the week and and then actually potentially heat could actually return to the southwestern US by next by next weekend. And heat index could be even worse. You have heat indexes could be in the of course in the in the in the hundreds across the east coast but potentially like 105 106 degrees across the mid Atlantic all the way as far north as like New York and even even triple digit heat indexes in, in southern Canada, even New Hampshire. So definitely a lot of heat surging across the eastern part of the US. And then even heat index is getting close to 110 across North Carolina and Virginia. So this is a very significant heat wave. That's on Tuesday. And, and that continues even across the south with some extreme heat on Wednesday and Thursday. But then it, then it starts to tone down just a little bit on, on Friday, but still a lot of heat with heat indexes around 100 degrees across most of the eastern part of the U.S. before the heat really starts to spread even even across the, the western part of the U.S. and the southwestern U.S., even though it's not going to be humid, it's going to be more, for the most part, more dry heat there. And also there's severe weather still going too. We have a slight risk of severe weather across the, across Minnesota, even parts of the Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma for the day one outlook, the day two outlook kind of for portions of the Midwest and also the day three outlook for a small area of Wyoming and surrounding states. That's kind of what's happening. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't already, share the video and make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more weather updates on the tropics. Thanks for watching Extreme Weather Zone out.